Got to sit back and wait. I'm waiting now. Hopefully we're, we're doing it right. We got to count to five. You know we're not doing it right. Yeah. Yeah, we're doing it right. They just don't, nobody likes the way we do it. We're doing it, it our, our way. way. Exactly. Which is the right way. Exactly. To do it that. So what's on your mind this week, Michael? So let me ask you a question. The ratings. We've seen a lot of ratings come out recently by many different publications. I've seen one cigar get Cigar of the Year in one publication and be 25th on the list on another publication. Mm -hmm. Do they matter to you? Does it matter to you what a cigar gets rated when you yeah. sit down and smoke a cigar? No, I love, I love when how they, I love reading all about the rating. Yeah, and all my love it because then it gives me something else that to go try. Oh, you know, I never thought of that cigar or this cigar. More so the description than the, the rating. Description than the rating. Well, no, I like to see the rating because obviously some you know yeah. everybody's opinion's different. Right. You know, but no, I like to see the rating and I, you know somebody really liked it that much to make it number one or two or cigar right. of the year or something. Right. But you're right, you know, you go on one list and this cigar's at the top, right. and the next list it's not even on. Not even anywhere to be found. So yeah. I wonder how, like it's mostly all the magazines and publications yeah. that do that. I'd like to know, like, well, they can't smoke every cigar out there, first of all. That's, right. that's impossible. Right. And second of all, is it, <laughs> what's the process? What's the process? Like, who picks the cigars they're going to pick? Right. Because obviously they're smoking them blind. That's true. So maybe if somebody's going to get them, they say, all right, we'll get us 25 cigars. Yeah. Well, and then it That's subjective, of course, right there. They whoever's really... choice it is to what cigars they're going to buy them. That's a good point. That's what I, uh, but I love, I love reading them. Right yeah, I think it's definitely good for the industry. You know, it but creates content. You know, it's something to talk about. It causes people to maybe try something out of their comfort zone that they may I not could, have. I'll guarantee you that all them top things where it's Cigar Aficionado or Cigar Journal or whatever, or some online places or uh, uh, two guys. Absolutely, I'm going to try them. Cigar yeah, I mean, I already see it. People coming in with a list. Yeah. Uh, I need this one, you know. But no, yeah. definitely I'm going to go try it. Definitely, you know. Uh, what are you smoking today? Herrera Esteli. A little bit out of my wheelhouse. I'm though. kind of proud I'll of you. I'm, I'm proud of you. I'm kind of proud so, right now. Uh, you know, I was looking through there. You know, some days I get on where it's just Fuente. You, know, you want what you want. Yeah. You know, like last night with Butera. Open my humidor. I was at home last night. You know, I got to go to Butera tonight. Right. Yeah, you know, that same thing. But no, today we're just walking through our humidor. And um, I figured to go to Herrera Estelle. It's a nice, solid cigar. But it's funny, you know, like when I'm looking, though, in a humidor for something different to try. I go by the size first and then the brand because I don't care what the brand is. I don't want to smoke a Corona or I'm not a torpedo smoker. Absolutely. And I'm not a Churchill smoker. I was looking at, you know, I like the over here before I made my selection and I was going to go with a, an AJ Fernandez New World. Well, they came out with a new size that I have here. It's a double Corona. Well, I'm not going to smoke a double Corona. I just don't have the time for it right now. And it's, 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 not it's a commitment. Time. But no, I, to me, it's not even the time on smoking something. To me, the taste is different. It is. The yeah. cigar in a different size is yeah. a different taste. Absolutely. So it's not to me, it's the time. Right. You know what I mean? It's more of the taste and the flavor that comes. That's why I don't smoke like Churchill size. Right. Me too. Yeah, I couldn't it's tell you last time I purchased And it's not Churchill. because of the size. There's times, you know, I'll smoke two or three cigars at night. Right. So if I'd have two large ones, I'll only smoke two. But to me, the taste is different. Yeah. And I find that I've been trying them and trying them because they're always usually the highest, the higher of the ratings is like the Torpedo or Bellicoso. I just don't just, like them. Just not your speed. Just yeah. not. I don't know if the draw is different because you have a smaller, you know, smaller yeah. draw coming through. You got, you got less surface area to deal with. Um, mm -hmm. And if you're a fast smoker, that's not ideal because right. you're going to get a little build up towards the end and, and then the taste is obviously mm -hmm. going to change. You know, but yeah, me too. I mean, I really don't go for very many uh, torpedoes no. for whatever reason. It's it's not. I don't even think it's a conscious decision. It's just something that I just I just I, I know the size it. that I'm looking for, and then I go for it. But you know what I'm going towards? I see myself, and you don't find a lot of them as a box press, and especially if it's a soft if it's a soft box press or something yeah. like that. Yeah. I see. I don't know. I'm getting. Uh, I tell you, I like five six years ago, I wouldn't even look at a cigar if it was box pressed. A hard box press. Yeah. Now, now I actually I enjoy it. It changes the whole dynamic yeah, of the cigar. 
Yeah, same cigar, you know, you could buy in a, in a, in a yeah. Toro or the box press Toro, and totally most, different. And they're mostly Toro size, but they're doing usually, the box presses, Usually, right? usually, yep. Six by 50, yeah. give, or, give or take a little bit um, here or there. You'd be really proud of my, out of my wheelhouse tonight. Jalapeno lager. Is that what you're drinking? Jalapeno lager. I forgot. So we got this uh, Cunningham Brewery. Uh, you know, we like to put our beers on draft in you know, local places, you know, our small uh, brewers and something. things. So we got this from Cunningham Brewery we have on draft now. Is their jalapeno lager, which got a lot of great... Yeah, people go nuts and over it, yeah. Ribbon yeah. And, in all the contests they entered, and also the New England IPA, which I understand, I'm no beer connoisseur or something, but I'll taste that. It's, yeah. It gives you a happy and a little bit of a... a little zinc to it. Little zinc. <laughs> How is it, though? I mean, it's a nice beer smooth? to smoke. Yeah. Nice, like nice, I easy drink drinking that. beer. Yeah. Because yeah. like sometimes that. you get these where it's one beer and you can't have another one of that same Oh, I can't even have a half. Some of it's like, <laughs> like motor oil coming out of that crap. <laughs> that thick, you get some of them thick quarters or... Next thing you know... Oh, Randy Macho Man Savage coming out. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. But no, this is, uh, for me, it's really nice. Uh, so that's what we always try, like some different local, yeah. like the local guys uh, putting some things. But that's, uh, I'm enjoying that. So I'm smoking the uh, the Trinidad Espiritu, which is a solid cigar, really nice, full bodied. I think one of my favorite blends that have come out this past year by Altidus. Um, really, really nice cigar. A lot of flavors, a lot of complexity. You know, it's, a, it's really rich. I enjoy it. But uh, speaking of the Trinidad part of this, um, what do you think about how a lot of these cigar publications are rating, you know, A, hard to get one-time release cigars that gets rated and it's been sold out for six months, or the Cuban cigars? Uh, like, what, what, are your, yeah, what are your thoughts on that? Yeah, the Cuban I could... I have a hard time with because obviously us as the American consumer don't have any opportunity to purchase them. And if you and see most of these publications are, are worldwide, you know yeah, what I mean? So but but where's the most of their things coming? Sure. And then not there. So we have no opportunity to buy the Cuban and then you know you'll see some places and I'll get emails from websites that they have Cuban, but I don't believe yeah that it's authentic or real. Yeah. Like I would never I mean, buy and we were in Cuban. Cuba, yeah. right? Yeah. We were in Cuba. We smoked cigars that were rolled right there in front Probably, of us. Yeah. And I'm gonna smoke a cigar from Nicaragua nine times Dominican. out of ten. Absolutely. And Dominican Republic over a Cuban this wasn't cigar. My flavor. I don't yeah. know what it was. But no, I have no I have a problem with them. I think it's not a problem. I mean, they could do whatever they want, but yeah. I like to read them. But they always have a Cuban cigar usually in the top five or something. As far as the hard release ones, who knows? When they tasted that, they may have been available. You yeah. don't know. It's not like they taste that and the next week the magazine yeah. comes out. I mean, so I, like, I like to see more mainstream cigars. Cigars that more people have an opportunity. Because I even, you know, a lot of when these ratings come out, people come out of the woodwork, right? They come in with their lists, and they're even asking you if you have the Cuban cigar or not. You know, so which, don't they don't you realize that, yeah, I mean, they're... The embargo. they're yeah. The embargo with that. Yeah. So. Speaking of JFK, put on a quick story. If you ever, I was reading that book, I paid houses of the Russell Buckley. I read that book. Did you read that? I read that book. So speaking of JFK, you know, he put the embargo on Cuba, and that's where I guess the mafia at the time and all and a lot of thing had all their money tied up in Cuba. Right. And then he cut it off. But in the book, didn't it kind of insinuate that? He was behind JFK's assassination, Russell Buffalino. Absolutely. Right? Yeah. Like, not came out and say it, but because but of... But more or less, let it be known, this was what happened. Because of... Yeah. They were mad about the embargo and Real whatever mad. else you went take, You take away somebody's uh, cash cow. Right. So, that's fine. A lot of things could go wrong. No doubt about it. Undesirable uh, direction. Yeah, they Real come quick. looking at and, and you're right. Like, some of the cigars, I see them... Great, and I think I know a lot about cigars, and I see a lot of cigars in all the years we've had our stores. But there's some cigars in there I never even heard of. <laughs> I was like, never even heard. So I don't know, is that maybe a cigar that's made in South Florida, just in a little place and just sold there? Yeah. And, and not really distributed anywhere else? Yeah, I mean, I one, thing, one thing that I, I mean, I know there's a lot of controversy around it, but I don't really buy it's you know the people that are advertising with the the magazine or the publication yeah. is what they're rating yeah. you know maybe to a degree where they want to give it an opportunity but i don't think these guys are gonna you know risk their credibility yeah. for a subpar cigar just because but they're no, getting I seen cigars in there and like 
I never even heard of them or where it came from. And then I just do a quick search and you can't even find them available like a, a, from an online company or anything. Right. So I wonder if that's something that maybe just made in, I don't know, Miami, just in sure. a little shop. Guy does rolling them for on his own. Yeah. Sells them to the local, his local trade. Yeah. And not really distributed outside of his area. Yeah. Yeah, quite and possibly. somebody picks it up. Is there something in there that I never, never even heard of? Speaking of the Trinidad Espiritu, mm -hmm. we need to congratulate uh, Mr. Tom Stroud for what's this? His second is this his second consecutive year running, or his second time? Or I'm he's, not sure. He's uh, he got the uh, the Northeast Sales uh, Manager sure of the year, year for his company. Okay. So congratulations, Tom. Yeah, I feel him very well deserved. Yeah, absolutely. He really he's a hard worker. He puts the time in, and he knows his stuff, and he puts the work in for us. So yeah, definitely. Congratulations, Tom. Yeah, if you're watching, you owe us a oh, beer cigar. and a cigar. Yeah, we'll just take the two <laughs> cigars. Two cigars. All right, we're negotiating. Now we're negotiating. <laughs> But no, Tom, Tom's a, you know, he's a great, great, uh, great guy, uh, hard worker, uh, pays attention, you know, he does a, he does a fine job. Yeah. But I like in the way this is smoked. It started out a little, uh, a little spicy, a little kick in the fur, but it's mellowing out about a quarter of the way down, a third of the way down now. So, a little bit about that cigar. That's the Herrera Esteli TAA blend. Mm -hmm. We're TAA members, uh, going on almost 15 years now, I think. Mm -hmm. And um, so every year the manufacturer will make an exclusive cigar for pretty much 75 cigar shops worldwide. Now, that specific blend has been going on a, a, a number of years. Sometimes these companies will do a one and done batch, other times they'll do a batch that they could sustain. But what I like about that cigar is I'm a big fan of the Liga Pravada number no. nine. Mm -hmm. So basically that cigar, the wrapper and the binder are are opposite. Okay. So, you know, it's got a lot of similarities, but it's it's different. It's different. It's by, totally different no by different than, than yep. the Liga. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah, it's different, you know, when you use a tobacco for a binder than when you you know you, you use it for a wrapper. Mm -hmm. So but uh, yeah there's a lot of similarities but different if you if you will. You know, it's a I enjoy both of those. It's a lot of the same tobaccos, but the way it's blended. Filler tobacco is going to be all yeah, the filler tobacco is different, but the, just that wrap. I mean, and let's face it. I mean, there could be, you know, hundreds of different combinations when you start getting into filler tobacco, wrapper, oh, yeah. binder. You yeah, know, no idea. But that that all plays into it. But nonetheless, two quality cigars that we're smoking here no today, doubt. and a great beer too. That jalapeno lager. Very good. Well, till next time. We're going to sit here for another five seconds so we don't get yelled at by Kristen. And, uh, you know, enjoy some fine cigars this weekend.